saw the monetary policy easing. So the MLF and OMO, those are China's uh, policy rates. So this is a clear signal China is on an easing path when it comes to monetary policy. Um, is it going to be enough by the South? Probably not. Um, as we were discussing, the demand is weak. Um, so we need to um, uh, uh, stimulate the demand. Uh, cutting interest rate, uh, having a cognitive monetary policy certainly help. Uh, but at the same time, we think we still think that uh, fiscal, uh, fiscal uh, through direct uh, uh, investment or consumption boost, that, that create demand much faster and more directly. And we think that, that should be doing more of the heavy lifting. Uh, but at the moment, we can understand if you are uh, having COVID-related lockdowns, this is the uh, winter uh, season uh, with the construction uh, in a seasonally low uh, period of time. And we had winter Olympics, uh, which might affect some of the uh, pollution-related uh, production. Um, so. Uh, all things considered, uh, this, uh, this might be helpful to have a monetary policy easing, uh, but we do think the fiscal policy, fiscal support need to follow up uh, for us to see material improvement in domestic demand. Wei Shan, last time we chatted, you said that the policymakers certainly need to take a more holistic approach to easing away from these traditional monetary and fiscal uh, policy support measures uh, because it's all very well to give people money, but if you can't go out and spend it because of this zero COVID approach, there's really no point. What sort of direct measures do you think we could actually see policymakers taking really to incentivise these consumers given this zero COVID policy at the moment? Yeah, I think when it comes to consumption, it's really difficult because we think of a consumption as the outcome, not the uh, the driver. If you think about why do people consume, one, they need income, and two, they don't need to save as much. So that will translate into uh, consumption growth or consumption increase. So at this point, if the economy has been under pressure, uh, you know, partly because of a COVID shock, so partly because of the deleveraging has been ongoing in the property sector, uh, that translates into uh, a rather soft income growth. And at the same time, if uh, COVID and housing both introduce more uncertainty, perhaps that will weigh on sentiment. Therefore, people want to save more rather than less. So that's why consumption, uh, we think, has been uh, facing a lot of headwinds. To your question, how can we turn that around? Um, you know, it's a, if the cause is that income growth is now strong and uh, uh, saving incentives are still uh, 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 quite strong, uh, then the solutions are also in these two areas. We need to create a domestic demand and increase income, and we need to uh, boost the confidence whether through on the property sector we continue to see market remain uh, worried about uh, uh, property sector uh, uh, soft landing. Uh, so this is the one area policymakers could provide more confidence. And through public investment or consumption, in a sense that provide more social safety net and uh, uh, allow households to save less and rely more on uh, a public provision of services. So I think that it's a, um, you know, it, it, it really needs to see that uh, jobs and income uh, growth first before we see uh, consumption growth falling suit.